Hi everyone, Evan from Find My Ancestry here. As promised, this video will show you how to research your female ancestors using the free website, familysearch.org. If you haven't already set up an account on this site, visit findmyancestry.net, that's my website. Click on the pop-up and join our list and I will send you my free ebook, Start Your Family Tree, free online. It walks you through step-by-step -step how to create an account here on familysearch.org and set up your family tree. Now, assuming you've done that, let's talk about how female ancestor research differs from male ancestor research a little bit. The main reason is because uh, women often had two names. You have your married name and your maiden name. And then sometimes women would get married multiple times and have multiple last names. Now that holds true for men as well. But for female, if you're looking for any record from the beginning of their lives, you want to search by their maiden name. And I'm going to show you a quick example using my favorite record for female ancestry research, which are marriage records. So I'm on Family Search's website here. I'm on their search page. I'm going to show you an example using my great grandmother, Elsie Jones. I've already filled in her name and her birthplace here and birth year. And I'm going to go ahead and click search. First thing that pops up here is a record from Indiana marriages from 1780 to 1922. And I'm going to click on this. And here we go. This is her marriage record with my great grandfather. This record is attached to his name. That's why his name's coming up first right here. And it shows at the top is his information. So his birth date, his birthplace, and then we get to spouse's name. And this is my great grandmother, her birthplace, her birth date, the date they got married and the county and the state. Go down here. This is Virgil's parents. So right away we have not just Elsie's maiden name, which I already typed in, but her husband's mother's maiden name. So Virgil's my great grandfather. Here are his parents, Jesse and Mildred. Now I have Mildred's maiden name. So that is one way to find maiden names for females. It's not just the bride, but the women listed on here as well. The mother of the groom and mother of the bride. So we'll go to her parents. We have Joseph Jones, and then we have Nellie Mae Hopkins. So this marriage record doesn't just give us Elsie's maiden name. We have Mildred's of Shaw and Nellie Mae Hopkins. So now we can go in. If we didn't know their maiden names before, we can kind of guesstimate a birth year based on the age of the people getting married. And we can look for their names. And that is a way to kind of break down brick walls and push back your tree a generation or two. So there's all the information gleaned from this record. It's been indexed. That just means someone's actually looked at the image itself and written down the information in it and put it here in a little index card format for us. If you want to cite your source over here on the right, record collection, Indiana marriages, 1780 to 1922. I'm going to go ahead and close this out now that I've shown you that example and look just from this little square. We have three maiden names, which is awesome. I'm going to see what else came up, comes up for Elsie in my little search here. Now, these, this isn't her. She never lived there. I know she didn't live here. And we can also cancel it out because uh, we know her spouse wasn't Paul Jones. We know Jones is her maiden name. We know this isn't her because we saw in her marriage record that her father was Joseph Jones. So we can go ahead and cancel this one out as matching. But here we go. And this one is a match. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this 1900 U.S. Census record for my great grandmother. She was only six years old, so obviously not married yet. And we'll see what we can get. So this is attached to her. So her name is first. The event type and year census from 1900. And even though she was born in Bedford, it looks like by the time she was six years old, they're now in Perry Township in Monroe County in Indiana. Has her gender, age, race, her relationship to the head of the household. Now you'll notice census records always list a head of the household. It'll be the first name of the household that's listed. And then in certain census records, it will list the people and the names and their relation to the head of household. So by 1900, the U.S. Federal Census was doing that. So here you can see she was the daughter of the head here, Joseph Jones. 
as her birthday and her birthplace. And now look at this. We have just not just her father's birthplace, but her mother's birthplace. So from her marriage record, we found out her mother was Nellie Mae Hopkins. And from this 1900 census, we can see that her mother was born in Illinois. So now we can go do a search for Nellie Mae Hopkins, born in Illinois, and we can guesstimate kind of a year that she was born. And let's see who else was in the household. Her father, it looks like she has a couple, three brothers here. And this is interesting. It took me a while to figure this out in a future census record that I'll show you in maybe another video. Louisa J. Hopkins, so the same name as Elsie's mother, is living in the household as a sister-in-law. In the next census that's taken, a lot, Louisa Hopkins is now Louisa Jones. She's married Joseph Jones, Elsie's father. So her mother's sister married her father after her mother passed away. Sounds like something that might be scandalous in 2019 when I'm making this video was not back in that time. Men were not home at all during the day, really. They needed a, if they had children, they needed someone to stay and take care of their kids. It was not uncommon for a man to marry a local woman who was unmarried or even a relative of his late wife, as we see in this example. So that's just a little extra bonus story here. And I'm going to close out of this. So that is just two sources I've shown, shown you, and you see all the information we've gleaned from it. We have not only Elsie's maiden name, her mother's maiden name, her husband's mother's maiden name, and where her mother was born. So that is just one way to search for female ancestors using marriage records and then also a census record we looked at. I'll do another video later on of how to use death certificates to research your female ancestors. A lot like marriage records, they'll often list the maiden name and the birthplace of the mother who has passed of the the mother of the woman who has passed away. So that's another great record to use. That's all for now. I hope this has been helpful. Don't forget to visit our website, findmyancestry.net, for more tips. Hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll talk to you soon.